Welcome to Dweller of the Dark. We are a channel honoring the yellowed and blackened bones of many prominent authors. We will be digging up several obscure, strange, and forgotten authors who influenced many of the great horror, science fiction, and fantasy writers today. Comment below if you like. If you have authors that you'd like to see recognized, list them in the comments or contact our author page. Subscribe for more tales of the horrifying, obscure, strange, and forgotten. We'll have quite a collection climbing out of the tombs. If you like any of our tales, comment, ring the bell, and crush the like button below. Unknown Horror Masters, as promised. We will be narrating a new master of horror, Julian Machen. We look forward to bringing you his terrifying, the spider. Keep sending more fresh blood for our ravenous appetite. Check out our other stories and our websites. Rumble, BitChute, YouTube, Dweller of the Dark. Official website, DwellerofTheDark.com. Facebook, Jeffrey LeBlanc, Horror Writer. Our books are on Kindle, Amazon. You can follow, support us on Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, Bandcamp, Dweller of the Dark. Children of Horror. We dedicate tonight's collection, Robert E. Howard's Immortal Horror, to Adarsh Krishnan. Thank you for the great comments. Conan the Sumerian battles the god in the bowl. Solomon Cain encounters the deathless queen. And a witch curses murderous sailors as we open up the gates of hell for Robert Irvin Howard. Tonight, we present a rare collection of Robert E. Howard's most horrific and ghastly poems to unnerve your very soul. Enjoy. Solomon Kane's Homecoming Published in Fanciful Tales, Fall 1936 The white gulls wheeled above the cliffs. The air was slashed with foam. The long tides moaned along the strand when Solomon Cain came home. He walked in silence, strange and dazed, through the little Devon town. His gaze, like a ghost, come back to life, roamed up the streets and down. The people followed wonderingly to mark his spectral stare, and in the tavern, silently, they thronged about him there. He heard as a man hears, in a dream, the worn old rafters creak. And Solomon lifted his drinking jack and spoke as a ghost might speak. There sat Sir Richard Grenville once. In smoke and flame he passed. And we were one to 53. But we gave them blast for blast. From Crimson Dawn to Crimson Dawn, we held the dawns at bay. The dead lay littered on our decks. Our mast was shot away. We beat them back with broken blades till Crimson ran the tide. Death thundered in the cannon smoke when Richard Grenville died. We should have blown her hull apart and sunk beneath the main. The people saw upon his wrist the scars of the racks of Spain. Where is Bess? said Solomon Cain. Woe that I caused her tears. In the quiet churchyard by the sea she has slept these seven years. The sea wind moaned at the window pane and Solomon bowed his head. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and the fairest fade, he said. His eyes 
were mystical deep pools that drowned unearthly things. And Solomon lifted up his head and spoke of his wonderings. Mine eyes have looked on sorcery in dark and naked lands, horror born of the jungle gloom and death on the pathless sands. And I have known a deathless queen in a city old as death, where towering pyramids of skulls her glory witnessed. Her kiss was like an adder's fang, with the sweetness Lilith had, and her red-eyed vassals howled for blood in that city of the mad. And I have slain a vampire sheep that sucked a black king white, and I have roamed through grisly hills where dead men walked at night. And I have seen heads fall like fruit in a slaver's barracoon. And I have seen winged demons fly all naked in the moon. My feet are weary of wandering, and age comes on apace. I fain would dwell in Devon now forever in my place. The howling of the ocean pack came whistling down the gale, and Solomon came threw up his head like a hound that sniffs the trail. Adown the wind, like a running pack, the hounds of the ocean bayed, and Solomon Cain rose up again and girt his Spanish blade. In his strange, cold eyes, a vagrant gleam grew wayward and blind and bright. And Solomon put the people by and went into the night. A wild moon rode the wild white clouds. The waves in white crest flowed. When Solomon Cain went forth again, and no man knew his road. They glimpsed him etched against the moon, where clouds on a hilltop thinned. They heard an eerie echoed call that whistled down the wind. The Song of the Bat. First published May 1927 in Weird Tales. The dusk was on the mountain and the stars were dim and frail. When the bats came flying, flying from the river and the veil to wheel against the twilight and sing their witchy tale. We were kings of old, they chanted. Rulers of a world enchanted. Every nation of creation owned our lordship over men. Diadems of power crowned us. Then rose Solomon to confound us. In the form of beast, he bound us. So our rule was broken then. Whirling, wheeling into westward, fled they in their phantom flight. Was it but a wingbeat music murmured through the star-gemmed night? Or the singing of a ghost clan whispering of forgotten might? Skulls and Dust First published in American Poet, May 1929 The Persian slaughtered the Apis Bull. Amen Ra is a dark.
was a deathly thing. Red Thunder, first published in JAPM, the Poetry Weekly, September 1929. Thunder, in the black skies beating down the rain. Thunder, in the black cliffs looming o'er the main. Thunder, on the black sea, and thunder in my brain. Gods, on the night wind, Satan's on his throne, by the red lake lurid and great grim stone. Still through the roofs of hell, the brooding thunders drone. Trident for a rapier, Satan thrust and foins, crouching on his throne, with his great goat loins. Souls are his footstools, and hearts are his coins. Slave of all the ages, though lord of the air, Solomon overcame him, set him roaring there, crouching on the coals where the great flames flare. Thunder from the grim gulfs out of cosmic deep, where the red eyes glimmer and the black wings sweep. Thunder down to Satan, wake him from his sleep. Thunder on the shores of hell, scattering the coal, riding down the mountain on the moon mare's foal, blasting out the caves of the gnome and the troll. Satan, brother Satan, rise and break your chain. Solomon is dust and his spells grow vain. Rise through the world in the thunder and the rain. Rush upon the cities, roaring in your might. Break down the towers in the moon's pale light. Build a wall of corpses for God's great sight. Quench the red thunder in my brain this night. Not only in death they die. Published in Magazine of Horror, number 28, July 1969. The old man leaned on his rusty spade. Down his gnarled arms, the slow sweat ran. I came through the moon and the black moon shade. Dig me a grave, old man. The old man lifted his spade again. The night is waning, be gone, he said. I owe no labor to living men. I only serve the dead. Lay by, lay by the spade, old man, and look for a space into my eyes. And into my eyes he gazed for a span while the moon waned in the skies. If ever a raven looked as I, he would rend for his feast those eyes away. And the old man lifted his shovel high and drove it into the clay. The loam gives way and the pebbles part. I bring you rest who have brought no lies. They can hide the death that is in the heart, but not the death in the eyes. Song at Midnight. First published in the Fantagraph, August 1940. I heard an old gibbet that crowned a bare hill creaking a song in the midnight chill. And I shivered to hear that grisly refrain that moaned in the night through the fog and the rain. Oh, where are the men who came to me and danced all night on the gallows tree? Gallant and peasant, man 
and made. Many have walked in that long parade. My chains are broken and red with rust. My wood is sealed with the moldy crust. Have men forgotten their debt to me? That they come no more to the gallows tree? The drear wind moaned for a dark refrain, and a raven called in the drifting rain. Oh, where are the feast that awaited me long, long ago on the gibbet tree? A slow worm spoke from the gallows foot. Death is spoils for a crow to loot. The winds and the rain, they worked their will. The kites and the ravens have had their fill. But last of all, when the chains broke free, the fruit of the gallows came to me. Men and their works so swiftly passed, come to a feast for the worms at last. Here I have gnawed on this marrow good, where now I gnaw on this crumbling wood. For men and their works are a feast for me, the bones and the noose and the gallows tree. Thank you for listening. Have a great night.